Hi everyone, if you remember about two months ago I tried to start my NeoPim journey and if you watch the video you know I tried to start from where I had absolutely no idea and realized I couldn't even traverse the just going up down kind of thing. I couldn't even do that. So I had to stop, quit the video at that time and since then I have tried to properly get into NeoVim, have my own configuration. So this is about just showing what I have built and how I got there. Problems I had along the way and everything else, right? So straight after doing that video, I realized how bad I was. So I tried to first just by learning the basic commands, right? Hey, check, hey, L, you move up, down, escape key, just getting used to hitting that all the time. Um, and that right and after a bit of time um, I realized it's and oh and then I was doing it in kickstart right so you're trying to build your own from the start bad idea so to anyone starting instead of well you could start by trying to build it by yourself but there will be a lot of problems and it's kind of discouraging when it goes down like that so I went and downloaded NVChat and once I downloaded and everything kind of started working, that's when I really fell in love. I did that for about a week or two and then after that I will say I was comfortable enough to copy some of the things that I liked in NVChat to my own configuration and then from there um, I build whatever I like. A lot of it is kind of just transferable things from NVChat as well. So with that, let's see what I've got, what I built and sort of the way that I like, like right? So if I open NVIM right here, so this is my current configuration, nothing much on the main window. Uh, I'm using Capuchin Mocha, Mocha for the thing and I do have a NeoTree, NeoVim, and uh, well, I don't know what the plugin is called, I think it's just NeoTree. Um, to browse on the side because I do need to look around uh, for a lot of files regularly and I need this. I actually use this quite a lot. Um, in a way, it's kind of trying to kind of trying to replicate VS Code in a way. Um, that's not really recommended, I guess. A lot of it is, as I said, um, inspired from NVChad. And as you can see, this is all the plugins that I have that I've set up. Um, if I close this and open lazy So as you can see there's about 25 plugins the, that's including the dependencies uh, Let us update it while we're here um, And yeah, so I tried to keep it at minimal ish So it's not like proper minimal like where some people go raw and then just try to use like one or two plugins not like that, I need everything that I have here, but at the same time, I don't think I need anything more, right? Um, and then I've got my LSP and everything set up, so if I open Mason, so I install everything through Mason, uh, so I have all my LSP servers, so ESLint, I need it. A lot of it kind of is also, depending on the, if you're working, uh, depending on the company that you're working for, so I do need to set up something like ESLint, Otherwise, my whole CI build will fail and then I have to redo everything, right? So it takes a lot of time. So I do need certain kind of LSP and formatting setup. Um, I work mostly in JavaScript. So I got TypeScript and sometimes have I not got Go. I have not got Go in this instance, but oh no, I do. I do have Go server as well up here because that's for my own personal projects. I'm trying to learn Go if you've seen the last couple of videos and all that. And one of the biggest things for me before I even started on NeoVim was a debugger. It's like if I could, my, my whole plan was if I could not get the debugger working, I was never going to use NVIM, right? And to this day, it is still kind of a problem. It's, I still a lot of the times keep switching back to VS Code every time I have to use a debugger. Uh, but I do have one set up. And it works to the majority of the cases. So if I go into one of my projects, um, just some project I was working on here. Um, and so you can go here. 
say, I don't know, space DB, adds a breakpoint, space DB, removes the breakpoint kind of thing. And if I say debug continue, um, that'll be the test plugin locally file. And there you go, it kind of launches everything into the debugger. And from here, if I wanted to, I can go jump right in this side, um, see all of the values here and all that normal debugger stuff, right? So let me terminate that first. So the problem that I had, at least for the most of the time, was if the program ran and after a bit of time, it kind of, let's say, crashed. Let's say the access token was expired or my you got a 400 error, right? It'll just crash. And I had no idea what was going on. I knew something was wrong in my program, but I did not know a way to stop the um debugger um at that point whereas in vs code you just see it at the bottom right um it was my own skills issue very recently like yesterday i found out like that you could just launch REPL and then it just keeps the um so if i say debug REPL, so on the last one nothing happened so it's fine but if it was a 400 error it will show right here at the bottom here and then i'll just continue from there still i think it's a lot of getting used to from that kind of view um but i'm i'm really liking it like uh, i do have as you can see um some tab set up as well so let me go back here and let's open a couple of files um I can switch between like normal tab. Um, I've set it as tab as well to switch between them. So that's nice and easy. Um, and I don't really know. So I got auto pairs for normal auto pair stuff, brackets matching, um, Lua line, buffer line, cat pushing theme, uh, dap, as I said, dap is the debugger. Uh, and you've got the dap UI, get signs, get, yep, you got get signs and I'm using get status um, to, for all of my, not get status, neo get, uh, as my plugin of choice for Git related stuff, really like it. I really like it, especially compared to VS Code, um, where I had to constantly go on the either you either had a choice to use the terminal or actually go on the UI. I started using UI a lot, got into a bad habit. Um, this makes it like it made it so much easier. There was no point of really constantly doing the terminal. Um, however, this is so much nicer, like the, it gives me the same feel of the terminal, but without, without actually making it as difficult as the terminal, having to remember every single command and everything, having to type the full parts in like those kind of things, um, so much more easier. Love it. And, uh, other than that, I don't think there is much to say, um, in this theming. It is available on my GitHub if anyone wants to have a look around. Um, I've set up a lot of like the combinations that I use uh, for doing the task is I try to, if I type space, so as you can see, they, I try to lead them by what it's going to go into. So if you start with a D after the leader key, so if you type space D, everything after that will be debugging related, right? If I type space and then G, everything after that will be Git related. So I try to keep my key mappings like that where possible. Um, otherwise, I, as I said before, I try to keep it minimal. So a lot of the like key bindings that I use are Vim default, right? Unless I have to type a command in, in which case I will not type the command in because that's too long. I uh, build my own key mappings for it. But again, I try to use that what sort of everyone uses unless I specifically do not like it. Uh, talking about specifically thing that I did not like is having to hit the escape key so much. I mapped it to caps lock. Um, if anyone wants to know how to use it, you can just use power toys. Um, it's available on the Microsoft store or wherever you want to download it from. Um, and then basically it gives you a bunch of options, but the one I really the, I am using is to uh, map um, that key. Uh, I don't even know where it is. Um, so if I go keyboard manager, there you go, you say caps lock to escape and escape turns to caps lock. And yeah, I tried to map other things. So I thought I would use it, but didn't really end up using it. Um, but yeah, 
that is all that is my new beam experience um as i said i am loving it so far except for like the some small hiccups here and there which do not work uh, sometimes as i said like company requires certain things and they don't really work well uh, powershell um, trying to get powershell working properly in neobim is i still haven't done it i probably could but this like it, it's a it's more difficult whereas in vs code i can just hit the play button the run button and everything works right so i have to sometimes code in powershell and as those times i have to switch to um vs code so still haven't completely removed the dependency on vs code but it is getting less and less and especially after i said i got that debug error like where it was crashing working since then i've like considered like it went down so much how much i had to go into vs code so that that is all for now within what like more just more than a month like under two months and that's what how far i've gotten and yeah i am loving it um and then so if hopefully if it goes well maybe like a year update or something maybe if i get better um currently i am still like sometimes i forget things and all that but with that thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the next one peace